Good morning, Matt here from Wesco Shaving's Daily Shave video series. For today's Daily Shave, I'm going to be doing another vintage shave and soap review. And for today's soap, I'm going to be using Arco, a shaving stick. This is a classic wet shaving product. It's been around since, I believe, the 1950s, this shaving stick. And here's the unopened one right here. And it's my favorite uh, form of shaving soap. I like it better than the tubs or the pucks um, or uh, you know tubes or cream. It's the shaving stick. So the the theme for today is going to be a beginner shave and uh, a budget shave. So the idea behind this is what is a great setup for somebody who's wants to dip their toe into wet shaving, doesn't want to put out a lot of money uh, up front, you know, upfront cost and they want to see what it's all about. Um, so I think this, so I'll try to introduce with this video um, some of the things that I would recommend for someone who's just starting out in wet shaving with it in the traditional way. So with a brush and uh, using a shaving soap and uh, you know, what's the setup that I would recommend. So, so uh, for the brush, I'd recommend starting out with either a bore or a synthetic. In this case, this is a Wesco Shaving um, Ancient Stone series or Ancient, Ancient Stone Collection uh, synthetic knot. They, I don't know if this particular brush is available right now in Wesco Shaving, but they do always offer a number of very affordable synthetic brushes uh, at Wesco Shaving. Um, usually they run around $20, sometimes less. Um, and a lot of them perform very similarly. Synthetics are great to start out with because right off the bat, they're very soft. They uh, work extremely well at building a lather and they have very little maintenance. So uh, they don't shed, they're, they're pretty much indestructible. Um, you know, you just have to rinse them out and they dry very easily. Um, it's a low maintenance uh, option for somebody who's starting out. Another great option for a brush would be a pore brush. Um, this one is a Samoa Owners Club, but I also have a, um, an Omega Professional, uh, which is one of my favorite brushes. Unfortunately, it's out on loan to a friend right now. Um, but uh, that's also a great option. It might be the best uh, deal in wet shaving is the Omega Professional Bore Brush. Uh, bore brushes, they do require a little bit of a break-in period. They're a little bit scratchy when you first get them, but the more you use them, they better, the better they get. Um, eventually, after a number of uses, the hairs will start to split at the end, and, um, and it becomes very soft, and even the split ends will split, and uh, it just gets better and better every time you use a bore brush. And I believe the Omega Pro is under $10 usually, um, making it... In my opinion, the best deal in wet shaving. The for the razor, I would recommend this right here. This is a vintage Tech Gillette Tech razor. So, of course, you could also go with the straight razor. So, my when I started uh, straight razor shaving, I went with the um, you know a vintage straight razor. So, there's an American razor. It cost about thirty dollars at the time. Um, and you can usually find these, uh, you know, at a reasonable cost, you know, it's not, it's kind of a no frills straight razor. Um, however, I think for someone starting out in wet shaving, they're better off starting with a DE razor. And even though I'm primarily a straight razor, so I'm a uh, shaver, I'm a little bit biased. Um, I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of things about a straight razor that might turn a lot of people off and we want to bring people in. So, you know, in other words, with a straight razor, there's a lot of maintenance that goes into it. There's a lot of other equipment you need to get a strop. You may need to get some stones, you know, so it is a higher cost up front. Um, there's more of a longer learning curve, whereas picking up a DE razor like this, a vintage, like a vintage tech or a, or a uh, super speed is a great option. Um, you know, there's virtually, you'll find there's a very steep learning curve. You'll pick this up. It's very, very intuitive to use. And uh, this is a mild shaver. Um, 
but it will still get the job done. So that's the basic setup. Uh, and then I'll talk about a little, some aftershaves after I finish the shave. So I'm, that was a long preamble. I'm going to get right into the shave and start talking about shaving sticks and Arco. I'm going to wet the face. And I'm going to wet the shaving stick. And I just will start rubbing it on the face. I love shaving sticks in general. I mentioned that it's my favorite form of shaving soap. I really wish that artisans would take up this format and start offering shaving sticks. Um, there's a number of things I like about it. One is I like the lack of the waste, you know, the packaging on this. You just have, you know, some paper, some foil on it. Um, you don't have all of that, you know, all that plastic, the tubs, the packaging. So that's number one. Number two, I like it's a smaller size. It's easier to, if you want to travel with it, um, it's less fussy. And I like the idea of having a little less soap. It's also not as big. I think it's 75 grams, the stick in particular. Um, and I envision that you would have, you know, artisans could sell these sticks and you could have, you know, try many different kinds and you wouldn't have all this soap that you don't necessarily are ever going to use. You know, a lot of people have very large collections and they usually come in big four ounce tubs. So I'm just going to wet the brush and get started. So the other thing, I'm just going to start painting some water in. And it'll get very sticky. It'll get very uh, thick here and feel, and this feels kind of sticky and pasty at this point. But we'll keep adding a bit of water into the lather. And first I'm just going to spread it around. The other thing about the stick is I believe it generates lather in a very efficient way. And what I mean is, so here I'm going to just, I was just dripping some water into the face of the brush. I'm going to paint it in. In other words, you're adding the soap uh, in a very thin layer to the face, right to the face. So it cuts out a lot of steps. So it's a lot faster generating lather than doing bold lather. And it spreads the soap out in a very thin, even layer, which is what you want. It's the easiest way of generating that lather. So here I'm adding some more water. I'm just going like this, just adding some water into my, to the face of the brush and painting it in. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep adding. And you'll find that Arco does take a lot of water. And adding a little more until I'm getting right there where I'm, it's getting a bit thin and I can see through to the skin. And at that point, I know I've added a, enough water to my brush and I can feel the bristles of the brush want to splay. And at that point, I'll start splaying the brush and building the lather up. So there are a lot of shaving sticks that I like. Um, there's the spiked shaving stick. I know Tabac makes a shaving stick. I also have the Palmolive, which are also great options. And they're usually a lot more affordable because you're getting a lot less soap as well. So, And just like that, I've got a beautiful lather that's starting to build. I can add a little more water. I'm just going to paint in a little bit more. And just like that, I've got a beautiful peaky lather from Orco. A shaving stick that costs around two or three dollars. I think 
When I bought this Arco, I got a two pack for $5. And two of these sticks. So let's see how I did. How does it compare to the Arco Man here? Let's see. I think my part is on this side. It's on the other side. We have the same receding hairline, it looks like. But it looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna get started with this vintage tech. So this is a pre-war tech because it has this fat handle. Um, but the tech I think has been the most popular or the longest line. So they produced, Gillette had produced these razors uh, longer than any other, any other razor design. And I think that's for a reason. It's very easy to use. It was, was like a more budget model. Very mild. And user friendly. Now the razor I'm using in this, the blade, is a Wizomet. Um, but if you're starting out, I would recommend trying out a few different packs. You can get five or ten packs of razors. Try a variety and find which razor, which blade works the best for you. Which one feels the most comfortable. And then you'll find, um, you know, the typical hundred pack of razors costs about around $10, anywhere from maybe nine, eight or $9 up to about $15 is the range where most of these uh, DE razors fall for a hundred pack. And if you get an average of three shaves off of the blade, you know, you've got about, you know, for about $10, you've got a year's worth of razors, which I think is pretty affordable. Now, Arco. Now, let's talk specifically about Arco. So, a lot of people don't like necessarily the scent on Arco. And I can understand. It's a bit, um, it's a bit industrial smelling. It's a bit uh, basic. But to me, it's basically just a clean, it's like a clean, soapy smell. You know, it has a little bit of a lemony kind of a scent to it, but mostly what I get is a soapy smell. And the, cell, the smell itself is, it's like a very strong soapy smell. So the scent strength on it is about a 7 or an 8 out of 10. And what it actually reminds me of is, um, let me go for a second pass here. What it reminds me of is... Uh, ivory soap. So if you grew up using ivory soap like I did, it has a little bit of nostalgia in that way. <clears throat> Reminds me a lot of like a very strong smelling ivory soap. So it's just kind of clean and inoffensive in my in my opinion. And I think that's, you know, one of the appeals to me of Arco and using something like this is it does evoke a certain kind of nostalgia. So in the same way, I like using Perrazzo or Mitchell's Wool Fat or Tabac, some of these products that, you know, they really were reminding you how your grandfather would use to shave they'd use something like this along these lines. Really, you know, people always talk about that, connecting to how, how your family, how they, how they used to shave back in the day, and that's part of the appeal of wet shaving. Um, and this really was close to how people would shave. They'd use a shaving stick, or they use, you know, Williams mug soap. You know, they weren't... You know, it was more utilitarian. So um, these are products that, you know, they got the job done. And they would have one razor, 
not a huge collection of different straight razors and DE razors. And they'd have a br one brush and one soap. So part of the nostalgia of using a product like that, like Arco, is really connecting to how people, you know, how your family, how your grandparents or your maybe your dad used to shave. And I do always feel a bit more connected when I'm using something like this. And the Gillette Tech, this one, even though it has this fat handle, it is very light and maneuverable razor overall. It's a little bit top heavy, uh, but it feels very, very safe. You feel like you can do no wrong. Now, getting back to Arco, another thing I love about Arco, is the performance. So I know for many seasoned West Shavers, Arco, you know, really the scent might not do it for them because they're, you know, more interested in artisan soaps that have, um, you know, or where the scent is like a dupe of their favorite cologne or whatever the case may be. But if any of them have used Arco, they, there's no denying that the performance is really excellent, especially for the price point. And it really is remarkable. Here I'm adding a little bit more soap. And what you'll notice when you feel Arco, it's very slick and it sticks to your skin very much. So I also I have a lot of soap here on the brush. I didn't really need to add the extra soap to my face, but I thought, why not? This was the fun of it. So it's very slick and it really sticks to the skin. And to me, that's always a good sign, no matter what soap I'm using, if it's sticking to the skin, in other words, it's kind of hard to rinse off. And it feels like it's leaving a layer of film on your face. I get the same feeling from tobacco is another great performing soap. I know it's going to be a good, you know, it's going to be very protective. So I look for that quality, the kind of stickiness of the soap. Let's go for a third pass. And this, um, this Gillette Tech just cruising around and it does it feels very very safe to use a Gillette Tech it's very intuitive I think it's a great beginner razor also they're fairly easy to find tech like this um, in good shape they made them by the millions and they're very affordable. You can usually find something like this around 20 or maybe $30. Uh, another great option would be to get a an adjustable, so like a Gillette Slim or a Fat Boy. The Slims, last time I looked, you can usually find them. People sell them all the time. Again, it's very, uh, there's a large supply of them out there. You can find them around $30. The fat boys go for a little bit of a premium or more like 50 or 60 in general. You know, it varies depending on the condition and everything else. And of course, another um, option would be to, you know, if you're squeamish about getting like a vintage razor or a used razor, is to get a, um, is to get a razor, you know, a new razor that's more affordable and a great option would be something like this. So this is the Lithe. 
um, head here with this is a handle that I had. Um, I sell these at West Coast Shaving. These were designed by Charcoal Goods and I think they go under $10 for the head and then they sell different handles separately. Um, another option is the Brawny is another one. And they have a bunch of budget razors, usually the budget razors that I think West Coast Shaving has on their site and a lot of the sites. They're usually the head design is a dupe of the uh, or clone, maybe inspired by the um, the E89 Edwin Jagger, Edwin Jagger, which is a fairly mild razor, good for a beginner starting out with shaving. And I think I'm more or less done. And just like that, I've got a pretty good shave. I think I've got a little bit of a nick right there, but not a big deal. So let me just show you guys the Arco Lather, what's left in the brush here. And this makes me happy that you can get this good of a lather off of a shaving stick that costs two or three dollars. Took me a little while to rinse that off. As I was saying, it does um, it does really stick to your skin, which is a good thing in general for shaving soap in my experience. So now as far as aftershaves, what's a great budget aftershave? I'll give a couple of examples here. This one is a classic. This is Pinot. Um, this one is a very barbershop fragrance. It might be a classic barbershop. Where I'm from, uh, if you go into a barbershop and they put an aftershave or they have a, shave, a powder, it usually smells of Pinot. So it smells, uh, it's hard to describe. It's very mossy. It's a little bit sweet, powdery. It's very powdery, mossy smelling. Um, It just, if you use this stuff, you're going to smell like you just came out of the barbershop. Another great one by Pinot is this one. I like this, Citrus Musk. It's very basic. It's citrusy and musky. It smells very clean and fresh, this one. But I think my all-time favorite budget aftershave is Perrazzo. So these two can be had around the Pinots, around $10, I would say. They come in a plastic bottle. This uh, Perrazzo, around 15, maybe 16, and as you can see, it's my favorite. I'm down at the bottom. There's only a tiny bit of juice left, and actually, I'm going to use this one. This one is just beautiful. It smells like eucalyptus and mint. <sighs> yep. So I hope this shave showed you that you don't have to spend a great amount of money to have a great shave. Um, I'd like to know what are your thoughts? What is your idea of a budget shave? What are some things you would recommend to someone who's starting out, uh, who's maybe wants to dip their toe into wet shaving, doesn't want to um, put out a boatload of cash? Um, also, what are your thoughts on Arco? Do you love it as much as I do? How do you feel about the scent and uh, the performance? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time in the Daily Shave Series.